Hi everyone, my name is Leandro Cardoso. I'm the current assistant conductor for the Orchestre Symphonique de Quebec here in Canada. And today we'll talk about score study. So I will explain why it's important to study your score and we will go through a five steps uh, guide. So we start with listening to recording, analysis, then creating a system and how to mark your score and then moving your arms and finally how to plan your rehearsal. So if you think this content is uh, relevant to you, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button and please leave the comments below. Why is important to study the score? Well, if you don't know the score well, you won't be able to move your arms in a good way, I would say, and your rehearsal will not be efficient because you will stop and you don't know exactly why you are stopping or why something is happening. Maybe it's your fault, maybe something is happening in the group that you are rehearsing. So preparing the score is absolutely fundamental if you want to be a professional conductor or even if you want to be just a good conductor maybe you have a, a small group a community that you want to develop it is very important to study this score so the first step is already controversial uh, many conducting teachers out there they will say that don't listen to recordings it's not good for you but i will share with you what christian machalaro uh, told me if you don't know this name Google it, you should definitely know this conductor. Yes, I start study score with listening some recordings, especially if I don't know the piece. Some moments in your life, you need to study a piece that you never heard before. And it's not a shame, especially if you are a young conductor, let's say you need to run a rehearsal for Beethoven Symphony Number no. 2. And maybe you already played in, in the aux, but you never actually opened the score and study. So you don't know the piece that well. Open the score and listen recordings. As many recordings that, as you want. So you have some reference, you understand how the music flows. In Beethoven temples are also a subject of discussion, so we will not talk about that uh, today. But it's, it's to get your ears around the music, so to know how the music goes. So this is the principle. What I really don't recommend is to conduct with the recordings and why you shouldn't do that because if you start practicing and conducting moving your arms with the recording playing you will be always behind the, the octa you won't be leading you will just be re replicating a recording and this is not helpful when you are in real life with the group okay so first step listen to the recordings, get an idea about the piece. If you play piano, you can play. If you have the skill to play, the score also is always a good practice. Okay, moving on. Analysis. In order to study a score well, you need to have to cover the basic elements of music. So harmony, counterpoint, analysis. Most of the orchestral repertoire, especially the standard repertoire, will be in the classical era or romantic era. And most of the pieces, they will have a structure, a clear structure. So symphonies, you have many symphonies in sonata form and some movements in rondo form or theme and variations. And some pieces will be rhapsodic. So you need to understand these concepts and to go through your score and mark the, what I say, macro sections. So what are the big points of structure? And this is also important not only for you to understand the piece, but later on, if you want to memorize, I will do another video just about memorizing for conductors. That is a whole different uh, idea, but won't talk about this right now. So it's very important to know the, the big structure of the piece, where are the key points. This will help you also in the rehearsal. When you stop and you want to run uh, a part again, so you, you say if you are uh, rehearsing a sonata form piece, and then you can stop in the B theme, on the second theme uh, of the exposition, and then work just on that. And then that makes 
sense for the musicians too because they understand oh okay so now you are working this section so you don't stop in a random point and okay so after you do this big picture analysis the macro form i will do bar phrases so this is the small structure so this piece goes like four bar phrase and then seven bar phrase you need to analyze so you have you must have this uh, concept very clear in your in your head L after that i think it's very important to do a harmony al analysis if you're doing tonal music so go to the key points if you if you did the macro structure you already know uh, what are the main keys of the piece so go and once I had a teacher that made me uh, analyze every single beat of the music and at first I didn't like but I understood the point of doing it uh, now I don't do every single beat anymore just because I don't have time to do that but I, I do a uh, thorough analysis uh, of the piece I think it's very important, especially if it's tonal music. If it's not tonal music, you need to understand if it's modal or is the composer using 12 tone or other kind of technique and understand how that uh, relates to the music, okay, the pro compositional process. Now it's time to mark the score. Here is uh, a point that I think most young conductors, they don't have idea how important it is to properly mark uh, the score. And the other thing is that most of the time, and these even more experienced conductors, they don't have a regular system. So let's say, today they open a score to study and they mark something with a green pencil. And tomorrow another score and just they use a pen, a black pen. And then like they don't have like a clear system to study. So I'll share with you what I use and I think is very helpful. It's not the only one. Uh, many teachers will have different ideas, but I do think it's very important for you to use one system for at least a few months and try to see if that works for you. If not, you can change, you can adapt, uh, but really stick with one system for let's say six months and study a bunch of scores. And if that doesn't work, then you change. But create like something that's regular because this is also important in the memorizing process so this is what i use um, i think this is important uh, to have so for me a uh, cues instrument cues or voice red then dynamic um, and everything that's related to dynamics so for example uh, it's for that uh, changed the dynamic of forte piano blue for effects for instance, pizzicati, multi, uh, mutes, or sotasto, ponticello, technique for uh, string instruments, or any special thing. And bar changes, I use orange. And then for tempo changes, I use uh, green. So yeah, sometimes it looks like a, a color book for children, uh, my score. But I think through the years that really helped me to have an idea uh, of the score. Also, I have a very uh, visual memory. So when I try to remember a piece, I close my eyes and I can see the page and I can see all the colors where I marked uh, everything that I, I thought was important. And this is not about marking the score, but one last thing that I will use is a regular pencil this is a 6b I, I i think it's important to not use like this 0 0.5 0 0.7 is too thin so i use the 6 bit and these i i write some comments for myself or some ideas or some emotions that i want to communicate to the orchestra and i also write some ideas for rehearsal we will talk about this in the next stop last thing uh that is very important rule so for me, uh, I separate every bar a phrase with a, a line. So I have the score here. I will write here. So I have an idea of uh, this section is 4 plus 4 plus 4. Then we have 12 bars. After marking your score is the part that you start to actually move your arms. So how do you do that? 
Well, at that point, if you already did all the analysis, you marked your score, you already know the score quite well. It's time, uh, I do uh, believe that every conductor, even, maybe I would change this idea later, but even experience, I think we should practice moving the arms. Because I realized when I first started, I did a lot of practice with my arms. So I would open the score, I would sing a line and conduct it. And then I stopped doing it. And I don't think it's a good idea because I think conducting is like playing an instrument and you need to, to move your arms to have this feeling of what you are doing. And again, this will be important in the memorization process that I will make another video later. Open a score. One thing that I think it's very helpful, I do every single instrument or at least like flute one and two, you open orchestra score. And then I will go through the flute and conduct, then oboe. Then today I do the woodwinds. Maybe tomorrow I'll do the brass. And then in two days I'll do uh, strings, for instance. So I'll go through this movement or this piece and I'll conduct singing that, that instrument. And when we are in this phase, uh, there is two things that might happen. One is that you have the feeling that you already know everything about that piece. And the other uh, feeling that you might have is that you are never ready to conduct it. And so I would say if you think that you know everything about that piece, probably you didn't study enough. Uh, most of the experienced conductors, they they would say that. I think I had many examples in my life of very good conductors that they told me that every time they open a score, even if they conduct it several times already, they would see something new and they would uh, see something fresh that they would like to bring. So I don't think that's the case. On the other hand, feeling that you are never prepared, yes, this is common. Uh, we need to just be a little bit careful with perfectionism that some people think that's a good thing. I don't believe in that, but topic for another video. The two different of mindsets that we can have, that's the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. If you are too perfectionist, you feel that you are never prepared, can uh, hinder your performance and your development. So at some moment, you need to decide that, well, it's okay. Uh, I'm ready to, to conduct it. And to be honest, in real life, many first opportunities in conducting Someone will call you or a friend and they will ask you to run a rehearsal in one day notice or two days notice. So you need to do the best you can and run the rehearsal or the performance. So this is something conductors uh, need to be used is to study fast and to be able to solve problems in a quick uh, pace. Another thing important when we are moving your arms is studying uh, the score it's not just moving and beating the tempo and singing like one, two, three, four. It's to move the arms in a musical way, uh, thinking about what you want to communicate, what the composer wants to communicate, what is there in the score, what's not there in the score. So uh, I didn't mention uh, before, but I believe uh, history knowledge, musical history is fundamental. So I'm considering that you, if you want to become a conductor, you have covered this part in your musical education. So you know who is Brahms, Beethoven, Stravinsky, Stravinsky. So you need to cover that part of music history so you have a good understanding of what was happening in the time that piece was composed. Now the last part. The last part is the planning the rehearsal. So yes, rehearsals are planned uh, but they are not rigid, okay? So I use uh, my 6-bit pencil. I write in the score some ideas that I have for the piece that I might want to work in rehearsal, but I'm not fixed to that because the rehearsal process is a live process, right? Uh, many things will happen, musicians will have questions, and many things will happen that you have not predicted that, uh, in, that, that, that would happen. Uh, sometimes you think, oh, this, this is an easy passage, I can go through and then I work in more difficult passage. And then you find out during the rehearsal that that section that you thought would be an easy passage actually is more complicated than you first thought. And then some challenging passes, passages, uh, you discover that the musicians can do quite well. 
So you need to adjust, but you also need to prepare. And actually, a good way of preparing something that I do, let's say you are rehearsing uh, the first movement of a symphony, a standard symphony, okay, the standard repertoire. So let's say Beethoven Symphony Number no. 5. Everybody knows it. Not so easy to conduct as you might think. So I will mark in my score, for instance, uh, how long is the exposition? How, how long? Five minutes, seven minutes, three minutes. Then how long is the development? How long is the coda? So I have an idea uh, that if I spend that much time in the rehearsal for one section, just to run the other section, it will take me that amount of time. So that way, I never finish the rehearsal in the mid of a, of a movement or in a part that it doesn't make sense for the musicians. And I am always watching the clock. So if I have one hour rehearsal, then I can uh, work in sections accordingly. So when i uh, almost done around this one hour, the music is already also in a point that we could wrap up and finish there. So it makes sense to the musicians to finish in a, in a good point. So this was uh, a brief idea of how to prepare the score. There is much more to be said, but this the idea for this video is just a short video or a conversation. And I would like you to tell me, how do you prepare your score? Leave in the comments below. Or if you don't agree with something that I said, or if you do the same, please let me know and we can exchange some ideas. Thank you so much. See you soon.